So, hello everybody, I'm Antonio Gutierrez, I'm the responsible uh, of the ground segment systems in Deimos Ingeniería. Uh, Deimos Ingeniería is, is a company that develops solutions for uh, space missions and uh, basically the ground segment systems are the part of that is with infrastructure in space missions and there are two things that we did this, this past year, one for the applications of uh, space data in uh, helping in this case farmers and irrigation systems Another part in uh, infrastructure, pure infrastructure, that Nuno will be presenting later on with the Mars. And I leave the floor to Vanya. Thank you, Thank Antonio. You. So, hello everyone. My name is Vanya Fonseca. I have been working with Daimush for the last six months. And from September to December, I was working with a value creation framework uh, applied to the internationalization of my farm. So, we first reached the first step, as Professor uh, explained to you, to understand what was the need of the company. So for the what, how, and why, I went to the company and tried to understand what they wanted. And the main, okay. So the main problem was that the company was mainly focusing on technology. They were not focusing on the market. And for that, it was preventing them to get, um, to attain further growth opportunities. On the other hand, they were focusing mainly on institutional customers, such as European Space Agency, uh, European Commission, and Neomedsat. And for that, a fluctuation in, fund, in funds allocation could threaten Daimus activities. At the end, at the Daimus board, they decided that it was time to focus on new opportunities. And this is what I basically was trying, was to test the viability of investing in a market-oriented strategy. So for that, we reached the first step, and we decided to go with the commercialization of a project that they already had, my farm. So what was it? It was a decision... Um, decision support system for maize, growings, uh, maize growers regarding irrigation management. On the one hand, it provided weekly information about how much water to be applied per pivot or sprinkler, and on the other hand, it allowed to monitor vegetation growth. So this was a partnership uh, made by Maretec and Daimush. Maretec was in, uh, research in, is a research institute from Technico, but both companies were mainly focusing on research and not on the market. So this project was, be <coughs> was being applied in Val de Soraya, so in Portugal, but the users were not um, benefiting from any value. They were not crea creating value for the company nor for the end users. So we reached to the second step and we had to decide where should we go. So we had 193 countries recognized by the United Nations, and from those we had to decide which criteria we wanted to choose or we were going to, to choose to select the final country. For that, first I, I interviewed 33 people within the area, outside the area, um, industry-related experts, researchers, also McKinsey consultants, then I did a group exercise with 40 students from the uh, Nova Doctoral School. And then at the end, I also um, um, rem um, used some of my um, um, research. And for that, at the end, we reached to 53 global uh, filters at the end and 24 local filters. They were within several areas, just to familiarize, uh, familiarize yourself with um, with the several um, areas of filters that we got, from competition to government to socioeconomic factors for this, uh, the main limitations and characteristics of the company, culture and climate of the country we're going to. Then we had 53 global filters, but we could not present all of them to the, uh, to the to Daimus board, so we decided to reduce them to 20 filters using a methodology also developed by Professor Luis Fliplage and Richard Hartman the poker methodology, in which we were just going to, to use those that really made sense for the company and would not uh, be um, a problem with the company's limitations. Also, we did the same thing with the local filters, and we decided to present 17 local filters to the um, board of directors meeting. So the third phase was basically the board of directors. Uh, the meeting with the board of directors. So we wanted to refine and validate my analysis at the time. First, we validated the filters. Then we chose the filters to be used on the local uh, and the global and global um, global and local filters respect respectively. And at the end, we ranked those filters to be applied on the global and local funnel. 
So here we started to, in the fourth step, we started to use the funnel. We went to the global funnel. So we had 193 countries and we had six filters. By using each one of us, uh, uh, each one of the filters, we reduce uh, the number of uh, countries and at the end we reach to the US. So the US was the global market we wanted to go to. However, we could not bring my farm to a whole country, so we had to go to a specific place, so a specific local market. So then we developed the second local funnel in which we used also six filters chosen by the board of directors of Daimush, and we reached to Kansas. As you can see, Kansas is this in, in the center of uh, the US, but still Kansas was too big. So we decided to develop a second local funnel by using four local filters, also chosen by the board of directors according to their characteristics limitations, and we went to Stevens. So Stevens County is on the southwest of Kansas. So what we had to understand was how was the market there before we developed the strategies to enter the market. So we found the presence of Latifondia, which was very important for the type of technology, high average energy costs, which basically our technology would help to, the, to be decreased, a regulation for water control, also the presence of governmental subsidies would represent a type of incentive for the farmers to buy our service, and at the end my farm would be the unique um, service that would provide this characteristics. There was no com uh, direct competitor in Stevens County. But then who cared? This was a question that was never done at Daimush and we, we started to think, okay, who is going to buy for this? So we developed another funnel, which I'm not going to show, I'm just bringing the simplification so that you understand that we basically, out of eight different types of target that we identified there, the ones with the highest potential for this type of technology was farmers with irrigated crops as they represent also the broader uh, range of clients in Stevens. So we started to develop the entry strategy. So for the part of development, uh, Damus and Maritech will still be in charge for that. On the other hand, the marketing and CRM, and CRM would, start, would be start to be done by Damus. So this was going to be a challenge. Uh, and then the sales would be directly by a local partner in which we still have to decide who is going to be and also online by Daimush. <laughs> then we had to decide for the marketing strategy, the four Ps. Well, we did the seven Ps, but just to, to get you familiar, familiarized, I'm just presenting the four Ps. The product would not be presented anymore as a breakthrough technology. It would not bring any technical... Um, vocabulary uh, for, to present the product. It, was going to be a, it is going to be a precision farming service. And also it's, go, it's going to be applied for all irrigated crops in Stevens instead of only maize. Also for the prize, it will be the first time that the, pro, the product would have a prize. This, the farmers would be charged for this. And we decided to go for a cost-based strategy and it will cost $99 per pivo or sprinkler per month. On the other hand, it would have an online platform and also it be, would be available on, the, on site, so at the local partner. And the promotion we had to develop, or we would have to develop a digital marketing strategy and promotional material would be um, present at the local partner. So for the end, we had to see where we were going. So would the company decide to go with the project, not go, to stand by? But before that, they even uh, asked me to build a business model. I'm just bringing the very short version of it. So first, I assigned the technical uh, activities to the respective uh, stakeholders, which was quite easy because the company has a lot of uh, engineers with a great background. The problem was we have no managers. We have no marketing uh, people. So we needed to hire a marketing intern or a marketing department. We'll see. Then I had to define the budget, but we postponed the sales forecast as we didn't know for sure about uh, some specific characteristics of the local, part, uh, the local uh, market and the local partner. So we left this after negotiations with the local partner. Also, we defined, I defined the timeline uh, and due to some uh, wants from the company, the expected launch date would be in February 2017, so next year. 
So I sat with the board and what they decided was first, they wanted to conduct further research about the local market, about Stevens, about the future local partner and so on. On the other hand, they, they think that this project has a lot of potential. So they want to start focusing on Portuguese golf courses in the, in the short term. This, this project has been presented this year at Faculdade de Ciências e Tecnologias, FCT, this month. And last month it was presented at the MIT uh, Portugal program. This is our team, my email, and Antonio's email if you want to reach us. Thank you very much. <laughs>